Happy holidays, folks. Welcome back to Botch by Babish, wherein I'm recreating a fabled old episode, a right jolly old episode. I made the breakfast dessert pasta from Elf. He just eats it at breakfast. There's no breakfast element to it, which uh, is gross. And I already did this and I don't have to do it again. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. What did you already do? What did I already do? Did you already do an intro? Yeah. I forgot to include it. Oh. Well, how are they going to know what we're doing? I'm here to make up for a mistake that I made long, long ago. You see, back in 2016, one of the earliest episodes of Binging, this was so long ago that this was before I would make like a good version, a babish version, if you will. So I just recreated this crap pasta and called it a day. I was young. But now, I'm here to make up for that by making the babish version of the dessert pasta. So, we're gonna make a sweet pasta that you would make room for after a big pasta dinner. <laughs> I'm, I am imagining having a big pasta dinner and being like, you know what sounds good for dessert? Pasta. <laughs> so, the elements in this pasta were tomato sauce based spaghetti topped with maple syrup, chocolate sauce, caramel sauce, chocolate chips, M&Ms, marshmallows, and Pop-Tarts. So how do we make a good version of that? Well, you're gonna have to watch to find out. It's a show. At the beginning of an episode of Lost, they tell you that everybody's dead? Did I just spoil Lost for you? It's been out for years. Watch it, you should have watched it by now. Anyway, let's make some pasta. <laughs> First things first, chocolate pasta dough. How do you make chocolate pasta dough? The age old question. Well, we have an answer for you today. I'm going to combine six and one quarter ounces of all purpose flour with one and one quarter ounces of cocoa powder and powdered sugar, salt, and anything chocolate related, I usually add a little bit of instant coffee. Now this is very granular and I don't want granular pasta. So I'm gonna process this a little bit into a very fine powder so that it integrates into the dough without any muss nor fuss, which ought to amp up the chocolate flavor without making things taste too coffee-y. But if it does taste coffee-y, who cares? Uh, I'm gonna start with two eggs because this really is not that much, like it's very, very small. <gasps> Just, it just popped right open. It's okay. It's all going the same place. All looks the same with the lights off. But the lights are on, Andrew. Not up here. Here we see the wonders of pasta making in a sweet context rather than savory. The life of a pasta maker is misery. Every day is a struggle against the elements to turn them into something delicious when all of nature only wants to make them disgusting. Okay, got ourselves something reminiscent of a dough here. Hopefully this will be enough. What if everybody here wants seconds? Hey, choose your next word very carefully. <laughs> very likely. No, what? No. It's Gross. <laughs> Are these washed? Oh, I don't know. No, I didn't. So no, maybe? Make sure you get this. Oh, good. <laughs> Always gesturally rinse your vegetables like that's gonna do fucking anything. Merry Christmas. So I think to do this, I'm basically gonna treat the tomatoes like I would fruit to make jam. Treat it as fruit? Isn't it fruit? Huh? I was just thinking about uh, penis size. That's fair. What? Uh, so I'm going to chop these up just a little bit just to help them break down. And then I'm gonna cook them with sugar until they're sugary and sweet and jam-like. And then I'm going to puree and strain them to make a tomato coolie. So also two thirds of a cup of maple syrup. I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer and I'm gonna cook these guys for probably about an hour. Normally I would have wanted to shock and peel them, but since we're pureeing and then straining this, it's not a concern and we're gonna get more tomato flavor from having the skins in there. And if there's one thing I want in my 
maple syrup dessert tomato sauce, it's real tomato flavor. Is this gonna work? We just realized that we're woefully low on Christmas cheer. So I'm going to arrange some Christmas style decor around the here. And um, that way you guys know just exactly what it is we're doing here today, which is something to do with the holidays. I'll don them. You happy? Yeah, yeah. What makes one of us? He said as a gag, though a few did wonder if there was truth to the jab. Kindle unraveled more headbrands, and Brad donned one with glee. Cute. As Nico hung garland with asymmetry, and as Kindle let go of her desire to fix it, she revealed her confusion surrounding who the Grinch is. Oh, no, no. I won't be the Grinch here trying to make all the holiday decorations perfect. Finally, Andrew ran lights round an already lit tree. What? Then cast it into the fireplace for the whole team to see. I put the Christmas tree in the fire. Feels like it has a negative connotation, doesn't it? You could say that about anything about that, that I did, that I do. It's fair. It's Christmas, and that means one thing, cookie butter. I've just decided. We're gonna make cookie butter to fill the ravioli with. In fact, we're gonna try a whole bunch of different fillings for the ravioli, because I don't know what's gonna work. I've never made sweet ravioli, and a lot of sweet things expand and explode when you eat them. So we're gonna try a couple different things to make sure that I don't have pop ravioli. But I think cookie butter is a strong contender because just even saying it out loud, it feels right. Cookie butter is achieved rather simply. Oh God, that felt so great. And now I'm going to add a little splash of water for some reason while the machine runs. Why not? Whoop. And then some melted style butter some maple syrup, and some salt. Woo! Cookie butter. Mm. Mm. It's spreadable graham crackers. This, I think, is gonna keep its shape when heated. So this is my current front runner for what stuff the ravioli with, but we'll see. Oh, Brad. That's not what Christmas is all about, Brad. That's not what it's all about. Uh, what it is all about is marshmallow fluff, uh, which I'm gonna make right now by heating a mixture of sugar and water and corn syrup to 240 and beating egg whites with a little bit of cream of tartar, which is gonna help stabilize the egg whites, and a little vanilla, and then slowly stream in the hot sugar mixture, which should create marshmallow fluff. Why do I feel scared right now? Because I'm pouring hotter than boiling sugar into something that could splatter it directly into our eyes and melt them out of their sockets. You should be afraid right now. You should be getting your affairs in order, calling your loved ones. I'm thinking of something good for your last words. Merry Christmas. That's good. What about you? Oh! <laughs> Just like you get at the store. <laughs> Precisely the same, no better, but you made it. And so what happens when we stuff it in some ravioli? Will it explode? Will it do not much? Stay tuned to find out. Uh, uh. I don't know, I don't know. Thirds, that's what I'll do, I'll do thirds. Oh, look at that. Like a brownie. Like a billion layer brownie. And some didn't know that brownie's been around for billions of years. <laughs> now, what I'm doing is the thing I do every time I make pasta, which is the lengthy process, literally and figuratively, of rolling out one step at a time. Okay, so, so I'm curious as to what is gonna make the best chocolate ravioli filling. What's going to not expand too much and pop? What's gonna taste good? What's gonna keep its shape? 
and look at what we got here. Every color of the rainbow. From green to brown, it's going down. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Sorry. Quiet. I'm <laughs> rhyming. First up, pistachio butter. I kind of want to try it because it is seasonally appropriate in its color and it's friggin' delicious. Here's some marshmallow fluff. Cookie butter. Oh yeah, oh, that's stuff. Oh, barely even wants to come out. Oh God, you, oh, you got really pushed. Oh, constipation joke, come on. We ordered some special Christmas shaped ravioli cutters. The only ones in existence. Uh, we have a bell. We have a Christmas uh, holiday style tree. We have a Snapchat logo. We have the Santa, uh, Santa hat. Here we go. I guess we're doing the hat on these fellas. Oh, that is heinous. This looks terrible. Well, it doesn't look like a hat, I'll, get, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that. Bell. This is more like, McDon like uh, McNuggets pieces than yeah. Christmas. It has a bell and a boot. And <laughs> Maybe Christmas isn't meant to be ravioli. We thought about whether we, if we could, but we didn't think about if we should. Hey, hey, Andrew. Hey. The, uh, the ravioli doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, you did, and you hit your head, and you're dead, and you're dumb now. That's fair. Merry Christmas. All right. So, with absolutely as open a mind as possible, I'm going to try this tomato coulis and see if it's something I would eat on dessert pasta. It's actually pretty good. Oh. It's a flavor I have never tasted before. <laughs> like it is an entirely new flavor. It's plenty tart. That's so good. I didn't know that we could take tomatoes and make them into a viable dessert sauce. Like, cause this stuff spanks. I think that's better than slaps if you ask me. Who's gonna win the head to head ravioli championship this Christmas? Water's boiling. <laughs> So I'm gonna drop these bad boys in and I've codified them. The trees are cookie butter, bells are the pistachio butter, and the hats are the, uh, no. We're gonna be able to tell immediately when we open them up. So it's completely pointless, but that is neither here nor there. What is both here and there is the Christmas spirit. In they go, 90 seconds. So these are out of the water, roughly 90 seconds. Cook time, they look amazing. <laughs> so now it's a matter of figuring out what's the best filling. And the hat was marshmallow fluff. Let's we'll start there. Let's go in order, shall we? Mmm. Looks good. Hey, let me cut one and a half for you. I thought the hat was pistachio. It is. <laughs> anyway, it was good. <laughs> and it showed me that I don't have a very good palate. So now the actual is the bell. That'll be the fluff. Let's see what the deal is. Virtually flavorless. So all I'm getting is the chocolate pasta. Now, last up was the cookie butter and these, def well, that one deflated bad. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. I didn't know it was possible for a Christmas tree to look pregnant. It's good, it's dry. So it, the sauces will help. Psa I think pistachio butter is the winner. Which shape do you want to use? Um, I don't know how I feel about these shapes at all, actually. I might want to go traditional because these are not appealing looking. They're, I don't know. But as we all see, he did know, of course, that it looked like shit as he felt some remorse. What? Of? So Kindle came in to help brainstorm an answer as she drew out her visions with forks on the counter. I don't think so, no. No? But nothing was working and it seemed all for naught. But then Andrew said, I have another thought. Mm -hmm. Kindle responded with some melancholy, to which Andrew replied, F ravioli. <laughs> so we're pivoting because the ravioli look gross. We're gonna have a hard time making a plate worthy of a, a thumbnail. Like how are you gonna, you, we want you to click on this, don't we? Don't we? That's what we're trying to do, right? Oh, that's, that's what this was for? We wanted to do the uh, ravioli as a sort of nod to Pop-Tarts, but they, they look gross, they don't look good, and I think chocolate spaghetti, like dark brown spaghetti, is gonna be much more appealing. And then we decorate it with red tomato coulis, green pistachio butter, and white 
marshmallow fluff, and it's gonna it would taste insane, but it's gonna look like Christmas. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is we've done all of this for nothing. You, of all people that I know, should know that there are no mistakes because they lead us to the point where we're supposed to go. Is that why you threw it in the trash? Just the pregnant ones. Oh, jingle bells, oh, jingle bells. How lovely are the jingle bells. Look at that, folks. Chocolate fettuccine. <laughs> we got chocolate fettuccine. This is what our forefathers dreamt of when they said Merry Christmas. Brad, sometimes I just don't know what to do with you. I'm worried with that. That you don't know what you're doing. And that you're not paying attention to what's happening. Ah! Welcome back to a quiet, composed holiday special of Botched by Babish. We're here calmly assembling. To plate up this dessert spaghetti, I'm gonna take some of this sweet tomato coulis. I'm gonna drop it down, spread it around, creating a pool. But nobody's swimming in this pool. Not this time of year. We're just dropping in a little chocolate pasta, a bunch of other sh This is insane. <laughs> pasta. I have some chocolate pasta here. I'm going to cook this for about 90 seconds. Then I'm going to twist it into a nest, plop it on this nest of sauce, and bespeckle it with Christmas spirit. You're watching Botched by Babish. How did that work? And I'm going to, I'm going to fish it out of here. And I got a little bit of butter that's heated up over here. Drop it straight in. Give it some rigorous tossing. There we go. So now I'm going to twirl the pasta into a festive nest, a, f a fest. Here's the water. And now to dot all over the dang place with green. Doesn't look great, <laughs> but the white is what's going to save it. <laughs> See, this is the stuff. Looks like dog shit. <laughs> that looks. Not great. I hope you didn't tune in looking for something good or edible. Well, let's give it a try, shall we? It's like, it's it's basically just like all the stuff, all the ravioli we tasted before. But what else can we do? <laughs> it's really the tomato coulis that's killing it. The, to the tomato coulis is impressive that tomatoes could taste so desserty. But it clashes the other flavors. So the question becomes, what do we do now? Okay, wait, 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 wait. I have an idea. <laughs> okay. Mistletoe? And as Andrew lamented this stupid suggestion, thank God we had Kindle, who sprang into action. She brought Andrew back from his decision to drink and kept him from drowning himself in the sink. <laughs> They mixed coolie with chocolate and all manner of sweets, and then shored up a plan for their tomato -y treat. No. Well, I think the answer is obvious, really. Kendall, you want to tell them or, sh or sh should I? I think I don't think I should tell them. I feel like I feel like your name is on the door, so it wouldn't it wouldn't be right if I. Brad, you fix this. All right. Okay, I'll say it. I think we have to do it without tomato. And what were you going to say? Mistletoe. Mistletoe. <laughs> ah, 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 but we're both men. <sighs> What's wrong with that? Nothing. And as they agreed there's no harm in love between guys, Kendall returned to the pasta with a thought exercise. All right. Does it have to look good? She said, just a bit unsure, to which Andrew replied, Wow. While looking demure. Or whatever that face is. Tomato, as it turns out, is a fruit, as you might have learned in uh, probably like fourth grade. Actually, earlier in this episode. We talked about this earlier in this episode? We did. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to include it in the edit. But I'll show it now. Huh? I was just thinking about uh, penis size. So, if we mix. Raspberry jam, strawberry jam, and tomato jam. We're gonna end up with mixed fruit jam, which is a thing. 
and will still qualify for kind of the tomato requirement of this dish. So I'm gonna blend those together. I'm gonna sieve them. And we're gonna see what happens. Let's start with the tomato. Then I'll match dollar per donut with the other Probably about a half cup in there. Let's dump in. This is our caramelized oishi strawberry jam that was utterly delicious that I really hope I didn't just ruin. Some raspberry fruit spread and some strawberry jam. Uh, finger. Okay, obviously much better direction. <laughs> okay, I do taste the tomato. So, it's still in there. We have tomato jam in there. All right, let's boogie. It's beautiful. <laughs> Don't you worry. Look at that, see, it's a wreath. It's a wreath. It's a wreath. <laughs> And I don't think it has to be hot. I'm not just saying that because it's no longer hot. <laughs> I'm saying that because I genuinely believe it. And that's, that's what the holidays are all about. <laughs> Jackson Pollock story? Mm -hmm. Like murder blood? Mm -hmm. Yeah, f That looks terrible. <laughs> is this what hell is? I heard Jackson Pollock and I got so excited. Here's what the f we're gonna do. We're gonna put this in the center, right, like that. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, yeah. That's the best thing we're gonna do <laughs> with this ridiculous bullshit and calling it. I will say, I know for a fact, it's gonna taste better than the original. Well, here we go, folks. This is so far my best shot at Buddy's dessert pasta. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. And frankly, that's an accomplishment that it's not bad. Um, so it's spiritually where it needs to be to be an improvement of Buddy's dessert pasta. Have I succeeded in taking all the elements of the original dish and putting them together in a way that works? Kinda, not really. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know what, guys? It's okay. It's okay. That's what the holidays are all about. Put the attention where it's supposed to go. On the delicious food. You know the only thing that's missing? Mistletoe. <laughs>